The Palace Library by Stephen Loveridge Chapter 4 The Great West Door The girls decided that if they tried to get dressed they would make too much noise. They also thought that if they went to wake Harry they would make even more noise and anyway Grace still thought he would be mean to her. So they put on their dressing gowns and crept along the corridors avoiding as many of the squeaky floorboards as they could. Grace stopped suddenly and put her hand on Eleanor's shoulder. What is it? Eleanor whispered. I think we should get Harry after all, Grace replied. Are you sure? replied Eleanor, but she smiled, thinking it was the right decision. Yes, if he doesn't believe me, then that's too bad, but it would be a pity not to tell him where we're going. When they turned to go back the way they had come, they were less cautious about the floorboards, and several squeaked. They seemed extra loud passing horrible hair buns room, but they stood still and listened carefully, holding their breath. Nothing. So they turned the corner to Harry's room. Harry's door was wide open, with the lights blazing. It was a mess. It was as if Harry had dressed very quickly and left everything else on the floor. Now, if it had been at home, Eleanor would not have been surprised. Her brother's room was a mess all the time there, but here... At Great Uncle Jasper's house, it was different. Horrible hair bun was so strict that they kept all their rooms pristine. The girls walked into the room and looked around. Where is he? asked Eleanor. Where's he gone? The deep voice that replied made them jump, and they turned round to face Great Uncle Jasper, and both felt slightly sheepish. Horrible hair bun stood just behind him, frowning as usual, but looking subdued and strained. I had to send him out to the palace library, said their great uncle quietly. Do you want me to get them dressed? asked the housekeeper, interrupting. No, there will be no time. Edgar will have to see to that, he said sharply and without explanation. Great uncle Jasper turned to her. Perhaps you could prepare my breakfast. I will speak to the girls alone. It was a dismissal and the girls looked on in awe as they had never seen horrible hair bun receiving orders before. Come with me, girls. We will need to talk as we go. It was the gentle voice they knew again. Great Uncle Jasper put his hands out. They didn't know him that well, and normally he was a distant figure, but it was a comforting gesture, and they each took one of his hands as they walked. I need to send you after Harry. I have sent him out to the library on an important journey. Time is short, so he has gone ahead. He will need your help. Why did you say out to the library again? Isn't it in your house? Doesn't Edgar work for you? asked Grace. You are very sharp to notice that, Grace. But no, the palace library isn't in this house, although it may appear so to you. The palace library is so well hidden that even the few people who know about it sometimes have trouble finding it. It doesn't have any doors in the conventional sense. The doors into the library are quite different to our normal understanding. They may not really even exist in our world at all. The library has a way of summoning people to it. People like you and Eleanor and Harry. I am one of the lucky ones who know about the library, but even I can't always find it. The library finds me. It can reach through history to find those who, like you, can help in a crisis. I am one of a council called the Witten that it reaches out to. You make it sound like a person, said Eleanor. She was a little out of breath. Great Uncle Jasper was a tall man with big strides, and they were struggling to keep up. Not a person really, but something with a personality anyway. Suddenly they were there. They stopped by the small door in the long gallery. Great Uncle Jasper squatted down to look at them at eye level and spoke to them as equals. You know where to go from here, Grace. I sent for Harry earlier and was about to send for both of you before I found you in Harry's room. There is no time to talk or to tell you more. Edgar will give you what you need. Good luck. With that, he gave them each a kiss on their cheeks and strode back to the end of the room. Grace and Eleanor felt lonely and bereft as he left. There were too many unanswered questions. 
With the hands that had been holding his, they found each other's hands, and as he left the corridor he turned and said, Trust each other, as friends and family should. Then he smiled. When you see Harry, I don't think he'll have any doubts about a magical library any longer. Both girls hesitated before going through the door. Grace looked at the tapestry on the wall and said to Eleanor, This picture has changed again. The dog was sleeping last time I was here and growling the time before that. She's looking impatient here, isn't she? said Eleanor. It's as if she's been pacing up and down, waiting for something or someone. Maybe she's waiting for us, said Grace. She's a very beautiful dog, added Eleanor, putting off the scary moment when they would open the door. How do you know the dog's a girl? asked Grace. I just know, replied Eleanor mysteriously, and stop holding my hands so tightly. But Grace noticed she didn't let go or release her own tight grip. They were both shivering, even though it wasn't cold. Then they opened the door. This time the library was dark. It looked as if it was dusk outside and there was a terrible storm raging. There was a domed roof high above them with a lantern window. Lightning burst with rolls of thunder sounding almost immediately. The light threw strange shadows around the room and the books. The girls were more than a little frightened, especially when they turned around and saw the sun shining through the windows of the long corridor. Grace and Eleanor looked at each other and paused. Grace took a deep breath, let go of Eleanor's hand and said, follow me. They climbed down the ladder, counting all 29 steps carefully. At the bottom of the stairs, they found Edgar, the librarian. He was waiting for them. Good morning, good morning, he said, fiddling with his hands impatiently. If it is morning, it's so hard to tell sometimes. How nice to meet you, Eleanor. It was immediately clear to Grace that he was a lot more serious than the previous day, even though he was still terribly polite. I didn't know whether you would be here at all, but I thought I'd wait anyway. The thing is, I'm just a little worried about Harry. He seems to have vanished, and I think he has gone out of another door. Grace wondered whether she should be cross with Harry for not believing her. But for now, she was just worried about him. There was too much to take in. Edgar continued. Perhaps it was foolish of me to let him go wandering around on his own. It has been such a long time since the library allowed two doors to be opened at once. I had forgotten it might be a problem. What do you mean the library allowed? Don't you mean you allowed? asked Eleanor, echoing Grace's question to Great Uncle Jasper. Oh no, I mean the library, said Edgar, without offering more of an explanation. I am just the librarian. But now you're here and you should be able to help. You can go after Harry. I'm sure he's gone through the Great West Door. But why couldn't you go after him? asked Grace. I know he's older than us, but he's still not even a teenager. I'm not allowed out of the palace library. When the Witten and the late King gave me the position, I knew that would be the case. It's a great burden sometimes, but it is my duty. Never mind, I have plenty to read. You're here now. We should still have enough time before the door closes again, I hope. Eleanor had been learning about history at school, so she brightly asked, The late king? Do you mean George the Sixth, the Queen's father? We've learnt about him. No, no, said Edgar distractedly, not him. Long before his reign. But there's no time to tell you now. We must get you ready. I've been thinking about books that might help you on your journey. Then perhaps you can take one for Harry, too. He'll need a different sort of book to you two girls, I think. No, no, said Edgar distractedly, not him, long before his reign. But there's no time to tell you now. We must get you ready. I've been thinking about books that might help you on your journey. Then perhaps you can take one for Harry, too. He'll need a different sort of book to you two girls, I think. Why do we need books to help us find Harry? Eleanor asked. Not to find him. I hope you won't have any problem finding Harry. You'll need books to get you ready for going through the door and to help you all when you get there. The library only allows two doors to be open at the same time, at a time of need, and it has a way of calling the people who might be able to help. That's clearly why you're all here, but of course you don't know that yet. Yes, we do, said Eleanor. Great Uncle Jasper told us. He sent us. Harry, too. 
Edgar looked at them strangely and with a little more respect. Did he now? That would explain a lot. I wish he'd told me too, but perhaps there wasn't time. It's funny. I spend so long with nothing to do but read, and then everything happens at once. Suddenly, both girls jumped as a great bell tolled. It filled the room with sound, but at the same time seemed very distant, before slowly fading away. Just before it finally faded, the same bell rang once more, and the girls jumped again. Edgar looked alert. We must hurry before the bells finish ringing quickly now. In spite of what he said, Edgar didn't move. I need to call Sophie. Who's Sophie? the girls asked together. Sophie will accompany you, replied Edgar. She is my companion here, and she will be your companion on your journey. Long ago, Sophie was the gift of a great queen, who, like you, continued Edgar, turning towards the elder of the girls, was called Eleanor. Sophie has great empathy, but be warned, although she will protect you and love you, she won't suffer fools. What's empa, empa? Oh, you know what I mean, asked Grace. Empathy means she will know what you think and feel, often before you know it yourself. And you, said Edgar, this time turning to Grace, have already met her. Have I? Edgar did not reply. Instead, he drew a slender silver whistle from inside his jacket and blew it. The girls heard nothing, just stared. A moment later, silently, and as if by magic, Sophie was standing at Edgar's side, and Grace understood. Even though she understood, she took a step back fearfully, for Sophie was the dog from the carpet, and she appeared to be snarling. But Eleanor, who had a real fondness for animals, was enchanted. She realised that Sophie was smiling, even though most dogs do not smile. Edgar leant down to pat the neck of the elegant deer hound. Eleanor and Grace, do not be afraid. Come and meet Sophie. They stepped forward, waiting to be introduced, since they knew you must always be introduced to dogs first. As Grace and Eleanor were only just taller than the deer hound, Sophie licked their noses and smiled again, and they both cuddled her and hugged her neck. Remember this, girls. Sophie is not a pet. Although she doesn't speak, you must regard her as your equal, for she is a royal hunting dog and has a lineage as great as, or greater than, many of the kings in the world. She will be a comfort to you. Just then, the bell rang again and the girls jumped, but Sophie stood firm. Edgar was right. She was a comfort already. Edgar was less of a comfort, as he said, now we must go and find your books and get you equipped. If that bell stops ringing before you go through the Great West Door, the door may vanish and Harry will be on his own. Who knows if you will ever see him again.